Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have this beautiful IBM NetVista back on the bench. The system from dual of the IBMs that we were able to get a posting to Windows 2000 Professional. A lot of great comments down below indicating that this could have been used in the development environment or reporting environment, but suffice it to say it was definitely in some sort of business environment. Now, I've taken an image of the hard drive that was on this system just because it was kind of really cool to see all the different types of software I hadn't seen before on the system. So we're going to replace the actual disk drive today for the scope of the video. We're going to clean out all the different inside of the system and restore this system back to its former glory. So we have lots to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, and here we are back on the bench with a different kind of camera angle, as we all know what we take when we want to start working on these systems. There's going to be a lot of work today. We're going to completely dis dismantle this system. So first thing we're going to do is just kind of tip these back. As we noted in the last video, it works out quite well to be able to do that. And they're designed to do that, to be able to service the system properly. And I'm just going to flip it around here just so we have full kind of visibility into the um into the system here. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to remove the fan shroud first. This is the uh, always a good time to get out here. This is just the housing that diverts the fan flow from the outside, inside, etc. So you can see it's quite dirty, the fan, so going to be a little bit of work there. And we're going to take off the fan itself. Yes, we're going full dismantle on this. So I know IBM uses the flathead screwdrivers, but you can also use a nut driver for it as well. So I'm going to do that for removing the heat sink and fan from this system. And I believe it's the P4 that's in the system, as we had noted earlier. And I believe it's pretty straightforward to remove once we get the clips removed. There we are. And there we are. So we have quite a dirty <laughs> CPU fan and heat sink there to clean out. And then we have our Pentium 4 processor there as well. One thing about these compact systems, they're very tightly wound, which is beautiful for space saving design but of course you have a lot of dirt that gets kind of accumulated there okay next thing we're gonna do is just remove the power supply atx connector from the motherboard just because uh, quite frankly it's in my way there so i'm gonna get that out of the way for now and we're gonna remove the notorious memory here that i will never be able to get installed again properly but hey that's the seems to be the running gag on this channel that uh Mr. Uh, Mr. Retro Recall cannot replace memory correctly. So we're going to remove the front panel uh, header here. I like these because it's literally just a cable, you know, that connects into that. And instead of having multiple wires plugging into that, it just kind of services through this. That's your power LED and your, your hard drive LED as well. Okay, let's remove some L uh, IDE cables here. I was going to say LED, but IDE cables. And, you know, as I mentioned before, it's critical for these um, to be positioned in such a way that they go back in this way because there's crimps in these that are already put in just because of their positioning. When you put this in, it's important because when you go to lower this cage, it can crush the cables. So it's important to be mindful of that. So this is for the CD-ROM, we're gonna remove that. And then this is for the hard disk drive here. So remove that. There we are, nice and easy. So you can see the same idea here. We have the ribbon cable that's folded feeding the floppy drive. So we're gonna move that as well. And uh, yeah, that looks, looks looks good there. And we'll do the same thing here. There we are. And we'll just take that out of there. It's already looking cleaner as it is. Okay, we're gonna move this middle kind of support bar. This is just a support bracket for strength on the actual system itself. And then we have this just flips up there, which gives us access to the AGP card. There, we have the AGB card out now. So this is the NVIDIA Riva TNT2. And then the driver shows a Vanta, Vanta LT. So definitely, uh, I have the drivers for it now, but um, yeah, I've never heard of that. To be honest with you, I've heard of TNT2, but not Vanta. So yeah, I don't exactly know. If you know in the comments down below, let me know. That'd be great. And then we have our Pentium 4 power connector here, 4-pin. 
that uh, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I tend to forget to install. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to be cooperating here. So just because it has the, the heat sink for the chipset, and I just want to not touch that. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and we have some other cables going on here. I'm just trying to see what's going on. Okay, so this is the speaker wire here. So that's just, yeah, it's even labeled speaker. So we'll know to put that back. And then we have the audio cable coming from the CD-ROM drive. So when you play uh, music CDs or you have CD audio on your games, et cetera, et cetera, that's what that's for there. Okay, and we're taking it out because we're going to be doing a complete clean of the system and rebuild. And quite frankly, uh, we'll be changing out the drive itself as well. Okay, so we have the Molex connectors now removed. And so one of the cool things about this is the system itself is that you're able to move this entire cage out of the system. So you're able to very quickly change out as you need. So I'm going to remove that. And I just wait to get everything kind of removed first from it, uh, just to make sure that we have everything kind of cleared out of the way so we're not accidentally removing things or tugging on things we're not supposed to. Now we are going to be leaving the floppy connect drive in here, sorry, but I am going to take it out just to kind of clean it a bit because as you can see, there's definitely some gunk that's built up in there we want to get cleaned up. So good news on that, that that's been removed. Okay, we have another header here. It looks like this is the front USB cable. So we're going to remove that as well. Just everybody remember where we parked as the expression goes <laughs> to make sure everything goes back the way it should. And okay, so we have all the cables removed from the actual motherboard. And the last thing I want to do is remove the power supply. It's just two screws on the outside and the back here that we remove. Nothing too fancy. Quite simple to remove, and I'll get that removed right now. There we are. We have the power supply removed. And the power supply is just, you know, kind of attached on the bottom with these two, kind of two, or sorry, three connectors here on the bottom. There's some fins and tabs that it goes into. And then here's the power supply itself. So I'm going to take this out in the garage and get this all kind of blown out just to make sure that we have all the dust out of there and wipe it all down so there'll be something separate off camera that I will do. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the actual main board out of the system to make it a lot easier to clean. Plus, I want to clean underneath this board as well. The system is so awesome that I want to make sure I restore it as best I can to get everything kind of give it the best chance. And removing dust is definitely important. Uh, through that process. So let's uh, let's go through this now. Okay, so we have the motherboard removed now. Nothing too fancy there. Uh, again, these are just the standoffs built into the case. So there's not much to do there. Got some good old thermal grease on me. That's wonderful. Actually, it seems pretty good. It doesn't seem to be dried out, so I wonder if that was replaced before. But the board itself looks very, very, very good. I mean, there was very little to no dirt underneath it. And, you know, that's why I debate in some of my videos, some people have commented, you know, you're doing a full restoration, but you're not cleaning up under the board. Well, look, <laughs> I, the proper way is to remove the board and get everything kind of clean. But most times I kind of gauge the system by what I'm seeing around it. And I'm making the decision as I'm going whether or not to remove the motherboard, because sometimes you can cause more damage than it's worth. So I'm looking at everything here and all the different capacitors look really, really good. I mean, there's some bent ones here and there, but um, just kind of straightening them out. They seem okay. And the same thing over here. Um, and, and where you'll see them a lot is around the CPU itself. You'll see, you know, as I mentioned in the previous video, is that when you have them kind of all lined up against a heat source, lower end capacitors can definitely cause some issues for you. Okay, that looks all good. So I'm going to move that for now and put it on my anti-static mat for now. And then we have that out of the way. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean out the actual chassis here, get everything kind of wiped down, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll put that aside and work on some other components. So here we go. Okay, and we're done with the chassis itself, and I think it looks pretty darn good. And all I'm using, if anyone's wondering and new to the channel, I'm actually just using 70% isopropyl alcohol. So, I mean, you can get all different ranges, 30, 50, 70. I have 99 here. You know, I'm using 70 because it stays on long enough to be able to use as an effective cleaning solution. 
and you know it does a really good job at cleaning down the system so i got everything kind of cleaned out and i also use a toothbrush to get in the you know kind of the nooks and crannies and i use j cloths and things like that and you know it kind of really helps get all this kind of cleaned up and i just love this case it's i mean it's in fantastic shape i mean there's no rust some of these systems i get have a lot of rust spots on them and what have you but yeah, anyway, cleaned up very well. Okay, so I put the USB front header back in just because that was quite a mission to get back into the into the system, but you know, we got it we got it installed there, which is great. Okay, I'm going to take this off the bench now and we're going to work on the next component. We're going to replace this drive that we have. This is the optical drive um, that we had said we're going to replace. So it just uses standard, if I can find my screwdriver, standard Phillips screwdrivers or sorry. Phillips screws. So we're going to remove that. Pretty straightforward. There's only two screws, it seems, that's on this system. And, you know, i got to be careful. Not all of them will take the four screws just because of the way the mounts are and the way it goes down inside the system. So we'll slide that right out there. Pretty straightforward. There we are. And we're going to be replacing it with an IBM LG drive. So we have the IBM warranty voided for moved. It's an LG CDRW, so 8X, 4X, 32X IDE drive. I just figured it'd be cool to use a very similar drive that would have had the black bezel on the front, but also a disk drive that, you know, when I saw the IBM on it, I said, you know what, that came out of an IBM machine. It'd be pretty good to do that. So before I do that, though, we're going to clean up this actual chassis itself. The nice thing about IBM, they have these little rails, so you squeeze them in like this, and the whole thing just slides out like that. And then we have our Seagate Barracuda 40 gig drive. Yeah, pretty awesome that this is still going quite well. Date code 31st of October, Halloween, 2001. So we're going to give that a quick uh, kind of a quick wipe down. Nothing fancy. There's not much more to do there. The nice thing about having these rails is unless you're changing the drive out, you can slide that right back in there and it's no problem at all. Okay, so we have that done. I'm just going to put the drive aside for now, just because we have a lot to do here. Okay, so let's get our chassis all cleaned up here. I mean, nothing fancy. We'll just spray with some isopropyl alcohol, give it a nice little bath here. And uh, yeah, I mean, here we go. So we have our chassis all clean here. Very straightforward. There's not much to do with that uh, outside of just wiping it down. It's just a thin layer of dust that was on that, so not a big deal. This is our drive, and the same thing. We're just going to give it a little bit of an isopropyl alcohol bath here, and there's a little bit of oxidation on here. Now, I'm just going to give it a little light scrub just because, you know, if there's any grime on here or anything I can remove, definitely going to do that using a toothbrush as that you're going to get in there for what we need to do. And then you can see a difference when you wipe it down. Now, you won't get everything off unless you, you know, use a Dremel tool or clean this off or use different type of chemicals, but... I mean, for what we're doing in this drive, that's fine. I mean, I can always use a newer drive and uh, use an adapter or what have you. But again, I just, uh, I like to use as original as possible. And when I saw this LG drive and I saw the, the actual IBM branding on the tag, I went, you know what? That's definitely my cup of tea for what this is. Okay, so we have that now cleaned up and we'll continue on to get this all back to normal i mean the rest of the drive looks great there's absolutely no problems that i'm seeing here but i am like i said just the top has a little bit of oxidation on it now i haven't tested this drive my assumption is that we're going to be fine with it i generally don't store these drives unless i've tested them so i'm hoping i don't remember testing is what i'm trying to say i only put a check mark on them or something just to indicate that it's good i have not so hopefully uh we'll be good there okay i'm going to slide this drive in here uh, this is our new drive to try to line it up the best I can. There we are. That seems to be roughly where the other one was, and it does seem to fit and align with the screw holes. So we get those installed. So we have the two screws in there nicely, and then I'm going to take our hard disk drive as well and get those, uh, get that slid in, and make sure we're good to go here. Now let's make sure I got the right side up here. There we are. I believe that's what it is. Yep because it has two little stops here for it to slide into. It's the groove on the top and yeah. And that it's amazing how heavy this gets when you <laughs> when you bring it to that stage. Okay, our floppy drive. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely dirty inside. So first thing I do is get that all cleaned out just by using the ESD vacuum. We'll get that uh, cleaned out. 
Okay, we have the drive cleaned out there. And I'm just going to do a quick removal of the drive just because uh, I want to take a look inside to make sure we are all good to go there. Okay, there's just two little screws here I need to remove to expose that I should be able to access the head that way. Just want to do a little quick clean here to make sure we are good to go on the read of the drive. There we are. We have that off and we should be able to slide that off no problem. There we are. Okay, we have that floppy drive all apart here and you know we have a little dirt inside there. We're just going to remove that. That looks good. And what I want to do is get the head cleaned out there as well. And to get the head cleaned out, I just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I use the 99% just because it's a little bit more pure that way and dissipates a lot faster. And let's just take a look at the head there. Here we are. We are good to go to reassemble. Now we're going to slide this back into the system here. Here we are. Just line it up pretty straightforward and again there's only two screws on this side and they line right up where they need to be we have our drive all reassembled and everything kind of cleaned up back there and we're going to reassemble this guy because i'm telling you they are worth their weight in gold in the ibm systems okay i'm gonna move that aside for now because we have our two drives set up there we have our memory here so i'm not going to do much here just going to give it a quick bath so we have one gig of ram uh, in the system which will be fine for what we want to do and we'll let that sit there for a few minutes and then we have our video card. The underside of it's worse just because the way it positions itself in the system when it's mounted. So we're going to get that all cleaned up here as well. All in all, the video card looks pretty good. So we have all those components kind of cleaned up there. So while we're waiting for those kind of to dissipate, we're just going to do a quick wipe down of the cables and all the rest of the components. Okay, so next on the bench we need to clean up is this amazing fan by IBM. It's actually it branded by IBM and we know it works fine. So why change it? Okay, we're going to move that now. It's just four screws that holds this in place. And it just gives us better access to being able to clean up the heat sink because a lot of dirt gets kind of caked on down there. I mean, it's just a standard fan plus I mean, just look at that. <laughs> oh, I can't even tell you if that's ever been cleaned. I mean, look at look at that. Oh, just, yeah. Anyway, we'll get that all sorted out with the vacuum and everything. But it's definitely dirty. So let's get this, uh, <laughs> let's get this all cleaned up. Okay, so we have the fan all cleaned up there, the heat sink and fan. That was quite the amount of work. It always is when you get into these kind of situations because they're so darn dirty. So we have that all cleaned up now, which is wonderful. Now let's get our infamous motherboard over here. And uh, before I do that, I'm just going to give us a quick wipe and get the excess dirt off of here. There we are, because it's always the fun treat. So there we go. There is our motherboard. And what a good looking site this is. Okay, so we have our fan assembly all reinstalled for the motherboard, the heat sink and fan. And I think it's looking pretty darn good. All the dust has been removed, all the dirt and grime has been removed. And uh, yeah, I just love seeing when everything starts to come together like this. We have the CPU. I had put some thermal grease there. We got it all aligned and good to go there. And yeah, I just love seeing all this and gets in such great shape for the age of it. 2001, we're talking 22 years old, uh, and, you know, it, it fires right up. And it just, it, it has to do, you know, always making sure that you're keeping care of these things and keeping the dirt off them as such as this. Because when you keep them clean like this, then you have a low risk of thermal buildup. So what I mean by that is it, it unfortunately creates buildup on the board so that the heat can't dissipate. So it's great to, great to do that. I think the next step now is just to bring the chassis back on the bench and try to get this reinstalled. 
Okay, so our chassis is back on the bench and we're not going to waste any time on this. So let's get this kind of slid back in here. Now that we know that that's all been cleaned and it has like little grooves here. There's a slot it goes into, which is nice. So we have that put in there now. Let's get this board all installed. We have that all installed now. The board has been reinstalled in the system here. I'm just going to put this cabling type back through here. And that's what gets plugged into the front I.O. here. So I don't want to forget about it. And that's, uh, yeah, because I do do that occasionally. Forget that it's installed and go from there. And the same thing with this. This is our USB front header. And we'll get that plugged back into the board as well. And we also have the header for the front speaker. Okay, we have the front speaker put in there now. And I'm just kind of just rerouting everything for now until we get everything installed. And what we'll do now is pop the memory back in. Just gonna put some deoxidant here. Okay, all right, we'll do the same thing with the other two sticks. These are 256 megs each giving us our total of uh, one gigabyte of RAM. Okay, we have that installed now. I'm going to install the front floppy drive assembly. Again, these are very simple to install. Put them in just like this, and it kind of holds it in place for now, which is just so handy, especially when you're working on so many things. Same thing with this, two little grooves, pops in. There we go. Literally just holds it all together for you while you work on the rest of the system. So we'll get the next beast put back in here, which is going to be the power supply. Okay, so we have our power supply installed again, and I blew it out in the garage. I took the air compressor and did what needed to do there. Okay, we're going to pop in the four pin power back to the motherboard so we don't forget that. Similarly with the ATX power, we'll put that in there now that we have the RAM installed, so we're not interfering anything with that. And the same thing with the Molex power, as well as the power for the floppy drive. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is already kind of crimped the way it should be. This was wrapped around this, actually, if I do remember, um, just to kind of keep the power out of the way there, which I think is a fantastic idea. Wow, it's just all coming together now. The power supply built specifically for the system. No extra wires, no extra cables. Definitely, if you needed to add anything else to this, which, quite frankly, there's not room. But if you needed to, or wanted to, or modify it, I've seen some crazy designs out there. You need to have some adapters to do so. Okay, so we have that installed now. Now we'll get some IDE and some, well, essentially some ribbon cables installed here next. There we are. And we'll pop this into the hard disk itself hard disk is installed there and it's done in such a way that if it does drop down that it, it can go down without any sort of issues with crimping and the same thing with the other ide cable and this one is going to be for our optical pretty straightforward pop that in and we'll do the same thing on the board here where it is secondary ide we have that now so that's been installed that's been installed that's installed so now we're left with our floppy okay and the cable itself will pop this in just like so and the twist goes towards the let's make sure i have this in right i do and the twist will go towards the drive itself it is keyed so that helps as well what i mean by keyed is that there's a notch in the cable there so we have the floppy connected, we have the optical drive connected, and we have the hard drive connected. We have the RAM installed. Okay, we're looking good. Okay, the next step here we're going to install is the video card. Pretty straightforward, nothing fancy going on here in IBM land. Okay, we have that installed. That's it. So it goes down like that and holds the card down in place instead of a screw, so I can put the bracket through as well. Okay, I'll pop that in there and pop that in there as well. And the same thing with our other drives here. Perfect. So that's literally it, right? You just got to be mindful of those cables as you do that. I keep on stressing it because I've crimped a few of them over the years where it just completely snaps the cable inside there. So I think the next step, what we do is we leave the cover off for now. We get the bench all set up and see if this fires back up to, well, quite frankly, to post. Let's go. 
Okay, we have the bench all set up temporarily just to see if it will post. And I left the power cord unplugged for the IBM because for whatever reason, the way they operate is the minute I plug this in, it will turn on regardless of what I do with the on off switch. So let's plug it in and see if we get post. Do we have post first try? <laughs> we do. <laughs> We have post first try. Now, am I excited for no reason yet? Let's find out. So we have the P4 1.8 installed, which is good. So everything seems to be working well there. We have, um, yeah, we have good airflow there. We have one gig of RAM installed and we have our hard drive installed. Now, does it detect the floppy drive? Okay, let's go into F1 for setup. It's saying configuration data updated just because, again, because we had changed everything. Uh, F1 for setup. Let's take a look at the optical drive to see what it detects. So it's not detecting the other IDE drive, which is the optical drive. So I'm going to take a look at that just to see if we can get that going. It may be an issue with the actual drive itself. I mean, we do have power, so that's a good sign, but I just want to make sure that that cable is okay. Okay, and we're back, and after some surgery to the computer, it just it was an issue with how I had the jumper set on the back of the drive. So we have all that now set up properly. So I'm just going to put this back down in place like it should be. So what I'm going to do now is the shroud back on here, get it into position, and fire back up, and see what we can do to get the operating system back installed. I think what we're going to do is actually utilize the recovery program I believe there's a recovery partition on this system for the original, because uh, it is OEM. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to see if I can access that. Let's see, that'd be really cool to do an IBM restoration utilizing the original uh, application, the recovery application back in 2001. So let's fire this up and see what happens. IBM product recovery program loading, please wait, okay. All right, do we want to do a full recovery or system utilities? Full recovery gives us format your hard disk, install Windows 2000, device drivers, and pre-installed applications. Well, yes, that's what we want to do. We'll enter on that and read the terms. Do we accept the terms? Everyone read that? Perfect. Read this before you continue. The product recovery program will delete all files from the operating system partition of your hard disk. If possible, back up any data files. So we already took an image of this because I didn't want to lose the image of this and I could not find the image files for this system on archive. So I'm definitely going to do what I can to get that up there. And if you continue, hard disk will be formatted and all files deleted. Attention, if you continue, do not turn off or restart. We understand, yes, and here we go. Wow, look at this. This is awesome. IBM product recovery. Nothing like using the original recovery partition to do this. I mean, most of these drives would die over the years. And of course, as being 20 years old, definitely has the potential of doing so. You have recovery disks to use instead of using the program itself. Unfortunately, I don't have the recovery disks. I wasn't able to locate them, as I mentioned. But having them on the drive here just makes it that much better. So we're just going to go through this recovery and see how this goes. And especially, I love the fact that we're able to get it to a point where we have the OEM software reinstalled as part of the system. <laughs> PK unzip. I haven't seen that in a long time. Holy. Okay, here it goes. Look at it, extracting all the different packages, getting it all installed on itself, essentially, from the partition. And like I said before, I have an image of this now, so I'll be able to uh, access this on another drive if this ever fails. But I'd like to be able to take this and somehow extract this exact model onto DVD potentially. So I may end up doing that in such a way that it's a full image backup of what we have here in, in ISO format across a span of disks and I'll upload them to archive. I just love seeing this. I mean, I was all ready to go with Windows 2000, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> but seeing this is just absolutely cool. Okay, and we're back after allowing the system to do the complete restoration, which is pretty awesome. 
I'll be honest, I have never seen that before. I've never been able, even with the fact that we had these, the, we always utilized the original disks, not with the system, but, you know, we would use a Windows disk and, you know, get, use the key and reinstall the drivers manually. Okay, it says here, welcome to the Windows 2000 setup wizard. This wizard installs Windows 2000 Professional on your computer. The wizard needs to gather some information. No problem. Hit next. Yes, we accept the agreement. And everything looks good there. We're going to go the retro recall. I just love in the top corner there that we have distributed by IBM. Okay, and uh, no password for now. It's fine. We'll hit next. And it's probably going to ask me for a CD key or the license key, I believe. Okay, we're going to restart one more time. Yeah, I just think this is pretty darn cool. So we do have some sound. Obviously, we've installed the sound drivers. We have an internal speaker inside here, not just the motherboard speaker, but an actual speaker inside the system for it to be independent. If you want to hook up external speakers, you could. Okay, let's get, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this system all together. So just the white balance here for everybody. Okay, so getting started, we have, we'll leave the screen up for now. Um, I just love it. So I mean, we have our operating system installed. Hey, click the start button. You can access all your programs, documents, and settings from the start menu. And it is completely IBM NetVista branded. This is exactly the state that I wanted in to be able to take the recovery image from. So we've restored the system. We know it's working. Let me shut it down and get the bench all set back up with everything cleaned up. And here we are, full restoration completed on this beautiful IBM NetVista computer. I went ahead and completely cleaned up the external of the case, the actual cover itself. So we are now restored and I just absolutely am in love with this IBM rendition of the Windows 2000 recovery. And I think it's just absolutely wonderful to see. The first thing we're gonna do is click on the start menu and see what programs it installed. So access IBM. I believe that this is kind of recovery software uh, information. Oh, there we go. So I set up and learn about your experience with your computer. So about my, our computer itself. So we also have some tools and tips. We're able to go through all the different items. And again, I want to explore the backup and restore option just because I want to see if I'm able to create recovery media using this fully restored system. If not, like I said, I'm going to take another snapshot of the actual hard disk while we know it's working. And then that way we'll have a copy and I'll just convert that over to DVDs, etc. And then on the web, accessories and upgrades, solutions and support. This is just absolutely amazing. So our system details, again, we still have that serial number that was in there. Uh, I imagine that was flashed that way. We have Windows 2000 Service Pack. Uh, OS is version 5 Service Pack 2. So Service Pack 4 was installed on the system prior to the restoration. I can. That's something I can work towards is just get that installed. Under advanced, we have advanced system details. So basically, it's just taking what we have in the actual control panel that we get access to your Windows, but it's doing it in here as well. So we have version Intel Pentium 4, 1.8 gigahertz, uh, current speed, that's fine. Our memory information, we have 14% utilized of one gig, and it shows where it's located and how many memory devices there are. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, we can certainly upgrade that slightly. 
Uh, yeah, I just think this is absolutely wonderful. And I don't know if you noticed, but I have my IBM keyboard out and my IBM mouse, my ball mouse. You know, we have we can't have this full setup without that. Now, full transparency, I do have a CRT that's a beautiful 17 inch IBM, true IBM branded CRT. But for the sake of everyone's eyes, and uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody had the ability to see the screen without any sort of flicker or anything. Okay, so we definitely have all this installed, which is absolutely amazing. And then we have our adapter, which is Vanta. That's our chipset for our video card. Okay, that's awesome. So we have all that installed. So IBM Access IBM is just their proprietary software to access the system. So IBM Access Support, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Under the Start menu, under Programs, we have our typical Windows 2000. It doesn't look like this is very much touched by IBM. I'm just looking through. We have all the standard stuff on here, which is great. Config safe would be something different. I'm not exactly sure what this is specifically. I'm not going to touch it just yet until I get a proper image of this system. IBM access support software selection CD. So I imagine there's ability to install additional software and what have you. Again, I'm interested in the IBM backup and restore because I want to find out what I can do to get that up and running and essentially do a proper image of the system. IBM information. So access IBM. We just went in there. Registration, make sure you register your computer. <laughs> Norton Antivirus 2002 comes with this system. So now I feel absolutely protected. Online books, uh, PC Doctor is installed. <laughs> I have not seen that in forever. So in case you had problems, you can run system diagnostics on the actual system. Look at this, PC Doctor for Windows 2000. Diagnostics, so we have CPU tests, hard drive tests, floppy tests. This is absolutely fantastic that this comes with this computer. I think it's just perfect. Okay, we're going to close out of that and uh, continue on here. We have Sal Max who installed, obviously, the drivers. Under our startup, we have nothing. And then we could optionally install Adobe Reader and what have you. So I just love, I love Windows 2000. It was an operating system that I quite enjoyed. Let's go under my computer under properties. There we are. So sure enough, we have the retro recall. We have manufactured by IBM. Love, 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 love this. I can't express it enough. Under hardware, let's see, we have our device manager. And it's all the similar things that we already saw. But going through again, we have our disk drive installed. That's our 40 gig drive. We have display adapters, our NVIDIA Vanta. We have DVD, CD, ROM drives, LG drive. That's the new one they installed, the CDRW. And then under our network adapters, we have the Intel Pro 100. So we have a 10100 network card in here. Under sound, we have our SoundMax integrated audio and our USB controllers are all installed. And that includes the one in the front that I reconnected. Plus we have a couple in the back. I just love how IBM branded this system and, you know, installed their own. So you can see all the different backgrounds, but that would be, you know, basically IBM branding. And then of course, you can go back and put the Windows 2000 or whatever you want. But quite frankly, I just love this background. Love the Net Vista became, I believe these became Think Centers, the branding. Keep me honest in the comments, but I believe that's what happened with these. On your screensaver, we don't currently have any. I'm just seeing if we have any that, yeah, I'm not seeing anything that would be really uh, related to the IBM brand. Uh, so we just have the default stuff here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything fancy there. So we'll leave that off for now. Appearance, all different Windows themes, but I'm just seeing if we have anything. You know, nothing IBM branded outside of the desktop here. And of course, we have web content, we have our effects, and uh, yeah, and we have the ability to go quite high with the video card, 1280 by 1024, which is a decent resolution, and up to 32 gig, and then, or 32 bit, sorry. And then you can see the plug and play monitor on NVIDIA Vanta IBM branded. Yeah, so here we are. I mean, we have the IBM Net Vista Type 6790 completely restored using that partition. And the fact that it was still on there is absolutely amazing in a working order. And my next step is to take a full, complete image of this and upload it as well. And, you know, at Windows 2000, I mean, the fact that it came with this and set everything up for us, you saw the full installation here on the channel. The system has been completely restored. Everything's been completely cleaned out, scrubbed down, battery replaced. Everything's in excellent condition and we'll get lots of life left out of this. And I definitely want to do more with this system. You know, this was a business class PC. It's clear by what's installed in here. 
But you know what? What about upgrading the video card a little bit and having some fun with some, you know, games that were built for Windows 2000 or compatible with Windows 2000? I think we could definitely have some fun with this. And, you know, just the sight of this screams 20, 2001, 22 years ago. I just absolutely love what you're seeing on the screen right now. If you love what you see on the screen right now and you love what you saw today, please give it a like, a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps this channel out and helps the channel grow. Hit the notification button, the little bell in the top corner, and change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Did you ever own one of these systems? What's your experience with Windows 2000? You know, do you have recovery media for one of these systems? I would love to connect with you if you do. Save a lot of work to get this uploaded, but I'm willing to do it for the retro community and keep this uploaded because someone else out there was going to come across this. And I'm telling you, it's worth it. I respond to all of my comments down below. Love the interaction on the channel and always making new content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.